eyes. So this is the first time I go live via my um, computer. And um, I can, I, can I, I see some people are watching already. Let's, let's wait one or two minutes for some more people to come live. Maybe you can, you can help me by testing the live by leaving a remark. Is that possible? Pop out chat. Well, look at this. Okay, I say something. Hello, how are you? Boom. Can you see this? Anyway, so I'm here in uh, I'm in London actually. Look, I have a few contains. This is my daily practice: trampoline jumping. I'm here uh, two weeks in lockdown because I give a course uh, next weekend in Cross Putney in London. And, um, uh, you know, like I've been, I've been in this house already for, for 10 days. It's my brother's house. And it's, it's just, you know, like I'm very aware that if you cannot leave the house, this can be uh, very shitty, you know. But, but on the other hand, I'm enjoying it so much. Just a question, can you hear me? Is this microphone working? Can you show me in the live chat, maybe? Oh, look, hi, Marin, nice. So this is working. So how's the sound? Can you please give me some feedback on the sound? And then we're gonna start like in one minute. Nice, All right. So um, why I'm doing this this live stream? It is because I'm I'm very busy with uh, making a new online course. It's called the Five Tibetan Rites, and you know the Five Tibetan Rites is the reason that I have a YouTube channel or that I'm paying attention to it because I put on uh, out this video together with my son Liam when he was four, and it's watched a lot of times and. Is it really helping people? And I know for me, it really, really changed my life. Uh, I'm doing these exercises like every day. And um, okay, coming through loud and clear. Thank you very much, Richard. Nice. Um, <clears throat> I'm doing these exercises every day uh, for about, I think 13 years ago about I started. And I can tell from my experience that my body became 10 years younger in 10 years' time. Now, I know this sounds like a bunch of woo and a bun bunch of, of crap, but, you know, this is according to, to the, the book where this all comes from. It's a book of Peter Kel Kelder. And I will post a PDF in the description of this video afterwards, right? Or maybe I can, well... Let me know if you want that. Uh, I will post that in the description. It's it's like a 35, 40 page book. It's really simple. According to that, to that book, you can reverse the aging process. You know, and this is just just amazing. Now I'm um, making this online course, and what I will do, I will first put it out on YouTube. You know, to check because I I really love YouTube. You know, like it's really really a hobby of mine. Uh, but also to check with you, you know, I'm learning to become better in making online courses and also to check with you, you know, like um, if it works, if the sound is right, like little details, like mechanical details, but also um, what you need more, you know, before I put it out and sell it via my website. I'm thinking now it will be a 10 week course. So, um, I just want to ask you, you know, like, uh, have you heard of these five Tibetan rites already? And and if so, do you practice it? And then another question is that, do you have a morning ritual? Means waking up and the first thing you do is like a little bit of exercise. So, you know, while I wait for you guys to 
answer in the chat. I will check in a, in a minute. First, I will. I would like to explain what I've learned when I uh, did my when I learned to become a personal trainer. And this is the following. You know, we have three big muscle groups: chest, belly, lower back, and legs. And, you know, like many, like especially younger people, they train in the gym and they train on one thing, like from the outward in, I call it, I'm training my biceps or I'm training my delta muscles or I'm training my triceps and then I do hips and then I do belly. Now, when you look at these big muscle groups, if you look at your general health, it's basically like this. There, you know, nobody's in real balance, you know, we can always strive for it, but there's always one of these three muscle groups that are less trained than the others. Like uh, older guys, for example, who get like a beer belly and have like hernia and lower back problems, clearly then your, your, this group of your lower belly is not well trained. Often guys spend a lot on doing push-ups, you know, like here, they're very well trained, lower belly. Not so much. Well, with women, it's often the other side. You know, you don't see a lot of women in general, of course, um, uh, people that go to the gym and work on it do. But, you know, like on average, women have like um, a less developed breast, breast, chest, you know, like this big group. Now, in general, if one of these groups is out of line, then, you know, like it's not, uh, you're not perfectly in line. But the more important is that, you know, like we have these three big groups and you, you've maybe, maybe, you know, people who are like extremely trained, but for some reason, energetically, they're not really in line. This is because of the following, following reason. Between these three big muscle groups are all these little groups that um, connect the three big muscle groups and if you you train like intensely the three big muscle groups but you forget about the little groups in between you may have muscles but you don't have energy now an energy is more important than a good looking body and i think maybe that you know they go hand in hand now um Another thing that, that I've learned when I became a personal trainer is that if you look at workout, you can see it as a triangle. You know, there's like building strength through, for example, push-ups. There's stretching, for example, yoga, and there's cardio. Now, building these three muscle groups is what most people think of. Um, yoga is like stretching. It activates those little muscles in between, so this is where you get the energy. And cardio is like making the body and the lymphatic system flow, right? Now, from my personal uh, experience, and this is why I went to this personal trainer, uh, G. Andries in Amsterdam, he's the most amazing personal trainer. You know, like if you need help, just go to G. Andries and his, his website is, um, well, I don't remember right now, but I will put it also in the description of this video. So what I had, I had like a shoulder injury, basically from too much computer, uh, too much work, stress, stuff like that. And I was doing a lot of yoga, but I didn't, you know, like resolve that problem in my shoulder only until I did strength exercise. So, um, you know, I tend to be more into yoga and I'm really not so much in cardio and into muscle building. But um, so that's my challenge, right? That's what I'm working on. And um, <clears throat> so this is why I'm doing this trampoline outside now for, um, for uh, 20 minutes a day. It's just amazing workout. It really makes you happy. Now, what this has to do with the Tibetan rites, like where if we go to the gym and we work on muscles, biceps, then legs, then belly, we train like from the outside in. When we do the Tibetan rites, we train like from the inside out. And what I truly feel is that it's like uh, the Tibetan rites are is core training. It's like you're training your spine, you know, the inside of your body. And if you train your spine, if you do cold, tra um, cold training, core training, then 
your body like flows into a natural state, which could be dropping weight, but it can be gaining weight as well. You know, and I think this is the secret of the five Tibetan rites. Now, um, let me check the chat. Ah, Joy is doing 26 years of daily exercise and, and the, the five Tibetan rites. That's amazing, Joy. So please, you know, like let me, you do them like twice as long as I do. So please let me know if I'm missing something. Yeah, it's really nice. Ah, and then another question about the World Breathing tri Tribe. I will get back to that later. Is that okay? Yeah, thanks, Joey. It's amazing. Yeah, they're amazing, amazing exercises. So the five Tibetan rites contains of five exercises. And really, if you look at the exercises, you think like, really, is this it? Is this going to make my body younger? But it's like energetically, like they click together and have a an um, not only a physical effect where your body is showing to become younger, um, it also has an energetic effect that you get more energy. Now, what I had is after three, four weeks, and I was um, about 38, 13 years ago, I was about 38, and I didn't work out. You know, I wasn't overweight or something. I wasn't doing that bad, but it didn't work out. Within three weeks to a month, I was sitting on my bicycle in Amsterdam and I felt like this, I call it the golden streams, you know, going up my spine. And while I was riding, I was like, oh my God, like, like a release of happy hormones. And then um, I just kept on doing these exercises and I, um, you build up these exercises to 21 times, but you do that very slowly. Now I'm making this this um, this online course now, where I will guide you step by step through the exercises. So the first week is done. It's like every day you add one ride. It starts with one big video that will be called debunking the myth around the five Tibetan rides, because what I understood from all these comments I got on my video that some people say left and other people say right, and some people are really, um, you know, sometimes even a bit aggressive, you know, like you don't perform that right, right. So I thought, you know, like I get rid of all the crap, including my own, let's be honest, including my own, go back to the source because the source of these five Tibetan, Tibetan rights is a book by Peter Kelder. It's called The Eye of the Revelation. You know, if you Google it, you can get to a free PDF, but I will post it in the in this video later on. So I took the book and with every ride, I read out loud, what does it say? And then I perform it. And I have to be honest that I did some things like a little bit different than was in the book, but also some things I feel you can interpret um, freely. You know, like in these times we can adjust anything, also ancient teachings as long as it feels right. And the point of these exercises, even if you do a little bit, like um, you start with three times. So after this debunking the myth video, there will be five videos, say Monday to Friday, to the, you know, like Monday, Tibetan right number one. I read it out loud, show it to you, and then you perform it. And then the next day you add Tibetan right number two. So a, in a week you build them up, and then three times is like the minimum. The week after you do three times, and then you build them up two by two every week, two more, if that feels right. If it doesn't feel right, if you get like nauseous, uh, uh, you start to sweat a lot, or you just feel unwell, it means you went too far. You should stay at, for example, even only five times the Tibetan rides, until it becomes boring. That's, you know, like sometimes boring is good. And from there, so that's the first week, from there, slowly build them up every time. Now, I made three kinds of videos for beginners because the Tibetan rides, as they are in the book, are not for people that are overweight or have an injury, you know, like, <clears throat> so I adjusted the exercises so a true, true beginner that, you know, like maybe somebody who hasn't worked out for 40 years can do 
the exercises. The normal and then the advanced. So there will be three kinds of videos, you know, for beginners, for like normal people who are like normally trained and advanced. And that advanced part is basically where you know that your neck is flexible. Like for example, Tibetan right number four uh, is like a tabletop in yoga. And that was 13 years ago, hell for me. You know, like it was so stuck in my, in my back. And then if I do them now, so I couldn't like put my <clears throat> head all the way back. If I'm doing them now, it's my favorite. You know, that's something I keep a mental note of. Like the pain of before could be the joy of tomorrow. You know, that's just a mental uh, part. All right, uh, let me just check. Yeah, Joy is saying better learn from the book not the YouTube videos. Yeah. Exactly. And then after you read the book, it's helpful when someone shows you how they're done. Um, and then let me get shortly two other questions that have nothing to do with the Tibetan rite. Hi, Tim. Um, I was wondering about the World Breathing Tribe you mentioned in your perks. Is that an invention of yours? Yes, it is. It's um, breathing that we do, I do three times a week and other instructors are doing it too. And it's on average, some weeks, it's like one time a day and some weeks it's like one to two and sometimes even three times a day. So uh, and those sessions are via Zoom. So um, I hope that answered your question, Aaron, let me know. Hans is asking, did you help people with depression? Yes, many of them, um, but not only through the Tibetan rites. You know, it's an amazing, you know, like I feel that if you have a workout that is helping you, but if you look at my, my training, I uh, used to call it Body Zen and I transferred it to the name Optimize. At this moment, it's still one-on-one -on -one coaching what I use. Um, but that will be eventually, this is why I'm also asking for your advice, like um, another question I would like to ask you is, what do you need? So, you know, Hans is probably knowing somebody who is depressed. Well, what I work with is five pillars. Number one is deep mindset training called the power of paradox. It's basically a way to, um, to to see your thoughts and to connect with the opposite of what you're thinking, paradoxical thinking, you can call it. And this is a way to learn to think half glass full. The second pillar is nutrition, where uh, which I often call nothing about nutrition because in my nutrition part, anything is allowed. You know, like um, you can find some videos on my channel about it. The third, Pillar is exercise, where I really hope that people are doing the five Tibetan rites. The fourth pillar, breathing techniques. You probably know that I'm a Wim Hof instructor and there's much more than Wim Hof breathing. So um, in that world breathing tribe, we're actually not doing Wim Hof breathing, but a lot of similar techniques. So breathing techniques are really amazing to influence. Well, to get back to your question, Hans, to release happy hormones. Yeah, and the fifth one is called training. Now, I believe that depression is not something um, that you can blame a person for. It's simply a lack of neurotransmitters and the right hormones. And the right hormones are dopamine, endorphins, DMT possibly, and uh, oxytocin. And then I'm missing serotonin, of course. So. You know, you cannot blame a person for being depressed. But through working on these five pillars, yes, I help many people with depression. And I've had many people who have a problem uh, with depression in my courses. It's getting a bit dark here. I'm sorry for that. All right, let me know if that answers your question. All right. So... Um, So where I was, was 
by doing the five Tibetan rise, you train your spine. And from that, like your body, body naturally flows in a better state, which could mean dropping weight, could mean gaining weight, will be more toned, stuff like that. Now, also, Joy is saying that in the beginning, she had like really, really big problems uh, with her wrists. Uh, this is another point that I want to make, and I call this the power of baby steps. You know, in this world, we kind of learn to push. You know, if you look at the Wim Hof method, for example, it's not about pushing yourself in an ice bath. When you are in an ice bath, there's only one way to cope with that ice bath, and it's not to tense up, not to fight against the stress, but to surrender to it. Now, what is the power of baby steps? It's a way to grow without effort. And it's by being very honest to yourself. And like in my path of building up the five Tibetan rites to 21 times, it took me about a year, a little bit less than a year. What I had is, so you, you start with three, you build them up. So I was building them up. And after like eight weeks or something, I was at 17. And then I got also joy pain in my wrist, like serious pain in my wrist. And I noticed this was an old injury because I had a motorcycle once. Not that I was driving, I was in the back because I really don't like uh, motorcycles. Uh, <clears throat> I got like really like that pain from that wrist. I had been four months in, in plaster years ago. It just came back. And I went back from 17 to three times. I kept on doing it very carefully until the pain left. And then I started building up again. And then again, like three months further, I was at 19. And then I got this injury in my back that I just told about. It came back. And again, I had to go back to three. So you keep on doing, but really lightly. So when you are building this up and you have a doubt if you go too far, maybe you start sweating, you feel a bit nauseous or too much energy flowing in your body, whatever, you take a step back. And this is what I mean with um, wait until it becomes boring. You know, if you do the rest of your life from now on, five times the Tibetan rides every morning, so like exercise one, five times, exercise two, five times, this will take you three minutes. That is better than pushing it through and giving up. Yeah, so if you want to grow effortlessly, you want to have a morning ritual that takes like almost no time. You know, between, for me, if I do uh, three times, it takes like two minutes. And if I do 21 times, and I do it a little bit fast, you know, like I'm a busy guy, I have five kids, stuff like that, blah, blah, all excuses maybe. But still, if I do 21 times, it takes me eight minutes. So um, <clears throat> you want to grow without effort, and you do that by baby steps. The discipline is up to you, and I'm going to help you with that online course that, you know, like it, I think it will take me a month before it comes out, but, you know, like time is on our side, right? But I will take you step by step and, and keep on reminding you that you should take a step back if it becomes too much. If you grow, want to grow without effort, then have a light exercise that is like almost too boring so you can do it every day without any any problem basically all right uh hans you can um uh, you can just contact me if you want, you know, like if you go to my website, timvanderfleet.com, timvanderfleet.com, there is my phone number in my upper left corner. So if you need any help, just send me a WhatsApp. That's much better than email for me. Does this technique, and this is another question from uh, Aqua. I like that name, Aqua Aqua. And does that technique help with autoimmune disorders? Well, as I just explained, it is a, um, it is like you're working from the inside out. So if you ask me, do you have scientific evidence? My answer has to be no. But if you ask me, do I believe that it helps with autoimmune disorders? I will say yes, and truly believe that. You know, like if you would stick to 
and this is just my structure, you know, I don't claim this to be true, but some form of mindset training, watching your nutrition a little bit. For example, you know, like, and if you feel unhappy, Japanese green tea, it's amazing. It's like influencing your autonomic nerve system, releasing happier hormones, training your blood vessels. Like if you drink instead of coffee, Japanese green tea, this has a huge effect on your mood. Um, basically all five pillars here. Yeah, so let me repeat them. Mindset training, learning to think glass half full. Nutrition, watch your nutrition a little bit. Exercise, breathing techniques and cold training. All five of them have an influence on your autonomic nervous system. And also, I would say the slowest is mindset training. You know, it takes a long term, time to think yourself ill or heal yourself through positive thinking. Nutrition, you know, like if you have been eating McDonald's for the last 20 years and you start changing your nutrition, don't expect results within a week. You know, first of all, the crap has to come out. So it take, will take at least two years. Now with exercise, you get like immediate reward, especially if you train light, of um, say the release of happy hormones and um, blood flow, lymphatic flow, because that's another thing, like our blood dumps its waste in the lymphatic system, but the lymphatic system doesn't have a heart. Yeah, so how does that pump around? It's done by exercise, and then especially light and frequent exercise by belly breathing, and I would say you want to keep on uh, drinking water. Then if you look at breathing techniques, it's even a faster way of influencing your autonomic nervous system, releasing dopamine. Um, um, all right, there's a lot of benefits. I've, I've said them so much that I blank out. Well, there's many benefits, but we're talking about the, the depression now, releasing dopamine through breathing. Within like 10 minutes, you can release dopamine. And the fifth is cold training, you know, like through um, an ice bath, but also the simple way is just ending your shower cold, you release endorphins, which is one of the four happy hormones, right? We have endorphins, dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin. And then DMT, which is a bit of a vague story, so let me not get into that. <clears throat> Thanks, Hank. Oh, sorry, I called you Hans. I mean, Hank. And Joy is saying, never push with the right. You will overdo and stop. I've seen it so many times because I recommend them to a lot of people. You're like me, Joy. <laughs> you have a YouTube channel, I will follow it. Anyway, so the point of Joy, and it's exactly my point. You know, like the power of baby steps is in surrendering to and not fighting. You know, when we're doing CrossFit or boot camp or run a marathon, we get to fight. You know, like at least, you know, like some marathon runners learn to really let go and they, they're they probably, you know, like they're a lot healthier than the people who push it too much. If you push, there's a very, very high chance of giving up. If you take one or two and even three steps back and do like, my idea is max 10 minutes of exercise in the morning. Minimum of two and a maximum of 10. And um, so, yeah, I just want to ask you, like, I think I'm ready within, like, the next five minutes, unless you have many questions. So one more question is, like, uh, what do you need? You know, like, um, do you have a, a morning ritual already? Do you need help with building it up? Apart from this 10-week course, would it be interesting for you to have like a 5-10 mini course, for example, to build it up? And how is your level of energy and happy hormones? It's like half an hour. It's a great time. It's really a bit dark here, isn't it? So, well, if you 
have, if you watch this later, yeah, this is a live stream. I'm going to end this live stream soon. Um, you can, I'm just pushing buttons here. Um, if you have a question, you can, you know, if you, if you see this later, you're not live with me and there's quite a lot of people live. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied. And if you have a question later, just leave a comment and I will get back to that. And if like, I cannot answer your comment because, you know, like I try not to be too much on my computer and typing like on my phone all the time. But if the answer is for me too much work to type, I will just make a new video and put it out. Because if you have a question, then you might actually help somebody else as well who has that same question. Yeah, so please, you can ask any question that you want and uh, just let me know if I can help in any other way. If you want to speak to me privately, you need any form of personal coaching or whatever, just go to my website and uh, my phone number, my email address too, is in the upper left corner. Um, my phone number too, you can just send me a WhatsApp and please mention your name. So. I think it's time to hang up. Uh, oh, there's one more question. One more. Um, there's a question here about scoliosis. Is. I feel like it makes exercise feel unbalanced. Well, let me check because I don't know what it is. I'm not a doctor. Sideways curvature of the spine. Hmm. No. Um, well, you know, like, I'm pretty sure that, so the question is, any advice for someone with scoliosis? And scoliosis is like if your spine is not straight. I'm pretty, you know, like, very, very sure that it cannot harm you. I would just take, take it really easy, you know, stick to every day a little bit. And what I noticed for me, from my posture compared to 13 years ago, I'm walking straight on my bicycle. I'm sitting straight and it's totally natural. So I'm, I will not claim that, you know, this will heal your scoliosis, but um, I'm pretty sure that it cannot harm it. And, you know, like it might actually work. I hope that answered your question. Um, the um, third ride made me nauseous for a year in the second year that's interesting so not in the first year but in the second year so the third drive is where you it's like the camel in yoga where you open your heart uh, i remember one time where i was uh, showing the exercises to uh, the husband of my niece and we did seven and when we did this exercise he started crying you know because he you know like we just get stuck if we don't do anything about our personal development, about our bodies. He started crying. So, yeah, you know, when you get nauseous for some reason, either you went a bit too far, but in general, it is that it's a detoxing effect. You know, the crap has to come out. So if that happens, my advice would be to um, drink a lot of water and take a step back, but keep on going. And that's exactly what you did, Joy. You did 26 years of this. Yeah, thank you for spreading the right joy saying thank you for being a, a sister. All right, so if there's no other questions, I'm going to leave it with this. Um, thank you for joining my first uh, live stream that I'm, I'm streaming over my laptop. You know, like, that's one thing I learned too is that I don't do, I don't understand, you know, like if I don't understand something, just go to YouTube. YouTube is my professor, you know, in, the, in a song of the Black Eyed Peas, uh, this guy is singing, uh, uh, Google is my professor. You know, I think it was in the Bible, it says, search and I shall find. Now, well, I feel it's Google and I shall find. And if you really want, you know, tutorials, YouTube and I shall find. Okay. Um, Thank you very much. It's getting really dark here, so it's time for me to uh, hang up the phone. Thank you very much for joining me. Let me know if you have a question in the comments or go to my website.
either email me or send me a WhatsApp via my phone number. All right? Namaste coffee. See you later. Bye-bye. Thanks. One last check. I see one more question, Laura Palmer. Can it be added to normal yoga practice before or after? Oh, good point. You do these exercises immediately after you wake up. All right, so um, I'm, you know, I have my time in COVID. I didn't do any sports apart from my morning exercises. But before that, for years, I was doing everyday hot yoga. But that is not where my strength is from. That is from my morning exercises, the five Tibetan rides. So can you add it to your normal yoga practice? Totally. And I would say, do this before anything else. And just do three times. It will take you two or three minutes, you know, like no waste of time. Okay, I'm really going now. Thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye.